In this, our 12th episode, it is our first on-the-road live presentation with the studio audience. We're joined by Steve Dildarian, creator and lead voice of The Life and Times of Tim on HBO. That's coming up right now on NSFW. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 12 for February 17th, 2010, The Life and Times of Chat Roulette. Brian, uh, thank you very, very much. It is fantastic to be here. And we have a, a, a legit uh, star again on our, on our humble podcast. I could not be happier. Yeah, that's uh, we're a little bit weirded out by that. In fact, we actually we made our hit list of big time celebrities that we wanted to have on. And there were some people that were too high. We didn't even think to put them on the list. So we actually had to go back and write in the name of Steve Dildarian just so I can <laughs> scratch it out. Nice. How's it going, Steve? <laughs> How's it going? It's going fantastic. How do we end up here? How did how do we show up on your radar? You're on freaking HBO for crying out loud. How do we get here? I think it was Dan Roman. I was on your show. He's a good friend of mine. We used to work together in San Francisco. And uh, I guess you had him on not too long ago doing his uh, world records. Yeah, did you see any of that episode? A little bit, yeah. yeah. Our, our death-defying episode. Not only death-defying <laughs> for the people who called in and participated, but also death-defying for our liability insurance. But exactly. yeah, and I guess Dan had a hell of a time because he's actually booked like half of our best guests since then. In fact, he'll be down at South by Southwest. Do you come out to South by Southwest in Austin, Texas? Do I? No, I've never been, there. never been to Austin at all. What? All right, we got to fix that. All right, look, before we get started, we got a new set of rules here. And something weird happened. You got an email, Justin, that you wanted yeah. to explain before we even got started. I, and first of all, I find this very difficult to believe. You tell me. Well, I don't know why you would find it difficult to believe, Brian. I don't have the face of a liar. Um, I got an email from Only have the a, soul uh, of a liar. All right, listen, there's no need for name calling, and I don't really appreciate it this early in the podcast. All okay, right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, that was it was inappropriate. Go, you go. I know. Well, thank you. I, I it makes you know, it makes me happy that you've acknowledged the folly of your ways. I got an email from a, a Federation of Conversational Correctness. Now I have, you know, I've heard about it here and there. I think we all have on some level. But what I, they I, what they informed me is that they're going to be watching today's show and awarding uh, a winner to uh, conversations that we're going to have. Uh, this, I don't really know how the process works, but they're going to be communicating through me. This is very difficult for me to believe that that there's a, first of all that there exists something called the International Federation of Conversational Correctness. Second they of all, do. that they would be awarding points. To random people it's having a, conversations. It's a venerable and organization. Would, and, they, and that they would communicate through you. That's what I don't understand. Yeah. Well, they said they wanted to communicate through me because, number one, um, they, they really like Steve. They're huge Life and Times of Tim fans. Um, and they really like me. They hate you, unfortunately. <laughs> so that's why they decided to talk to me as opposed to you. They find okay. you annoying right. and vapid. Done. Done and done. Yeah. And so what, what's going to happen? Like at moments, your eyes will turn white and you'll have avatar powers and you'll have to, to be tell honest, us whether or not like, I, I don't even know. They just said, you'll know it when you hear it. And then the communique will come through me. So I don't okay, know. I don't We're going to have to listen okay, to Okay, maybe this is true. We'll see. But regardless, we do have to thank the only reason this episode is even possible outside of the cooperation of everyone at the Twit Cottage, including Colleen, our, our intrepid engineer, doing a fantastic job switching remotely. But we actually have two Skype cameras set up at the our, we're going to call it our East, our East Coast Post, our East Coast Bunker, deep in the basement of Patrick Delahanty, longtime fan of the show, where he runs his own podcast, Anime Cons, at AnimeCons.com. Uh, fantastic show, all of you, if you're into Anime Cons or Cons, Con Games at Anime. I, do, I don't know so what you that, Is that it? Is it like career criminals who are yeah, also but, fans but of this, Dragon Ball Z? Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Is but that it? literally, we have our first ever studio audience, and I'm proud to announce that we have five people watching NSFW Live. Make some noise. Go. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's that's a hell of a start. I don't know. I'm proud of our first studio audience gig. I think that's and of course the inimitable chat room as well. We got the chat room as well. So what are we what are we covering today? I want to know about about Tim's gig. Yeah, let, let's talk a little bit about the life and times of Tim. The second season premieres this Friday at 9.30 on HBO. Uh, you know, I'll tell you what, I think for those of you who are not familiar with the show, go ahead and check out the clips. They're all over uh, YouTube from, from season one. But uh, talk a little bit about the show, uh, Tim, about like, you know, how it came about and uh, you know, the response to the first season. You just called him Tim, by the way. I yeah, called yeah, him yeah, Tim. That, that that happens a lot, Steve, actually. sorry. Well, because you play Tim. Tim. Tim is Steve, and Steve is Tim on some level, right? By the way, your, your, your actual face, this is the first time I'm seeing your actual face, and you do bear a striking resemblance to the crudely drawn stick figures that we see in the show. You look yeah, exactly yeah. like Tim. Yes, <laughs> yes, there it is, right like there. Yeah, you're not the first to say it. Uh, the drawing vaguely resembles me, and, and hopefully the storyline's a little bit less, but um, yeah, you're not the first to call me Tim. <laughs> so where did it come from? Do you have a, I know you have a background in advertising and uh, obviously, you know, you, you got comedy chops. How, how, how did the whole thing start, Life and Times of Tim? You know, it was really just kind of stupid, to be honest. We had no plans of making a TV show or, or I had no knowledge of how to animate. I just wrote this short film called Angry Unpaid Hooker, which I thought was funny and seemed like a, you know, funny six minute conversation to listen to a guy trying to explain why there's a hooker on his couch. And me and my girlfriend, Lynette, just taught ourselves to animate the hard way, really. We, we you know, I used iMovie, which is so, all I, I mean, knew. Yeah. So literally, the, the, the short, and by the way, the short's up at YouTube.com. Angry Unpaid Hooker is all you need to search for. And it's very funny and, and exactly like the life and times of Tim. So literally, this is goofing off on what? A weekend, a week or two? You have this idea, you goof off on iMovie, bada bing, bada boom, you're famous? Yeah, I wouldn't say goofing off because the reality is it took me quite a, a long time. It's pretty tedious, even though it sounds dumb and, and silly. You know, to make six minutes of animation in iMovie is not the easiest thing in the world. I'm literally cutting frame by frame between different mouth positions and someone crossing their arm or not. So if you ever look at my iMovie project, it's probably the most ambitious iMovie project ever attempted. It's, so it's so a, you make sure um, to actually animate the full series in iMovie as well, right? Just to well, make other people see how hard it was? <laughs> you know, that's, that's not really a joke. We spent a good chunk of season one with me insisting that we had to use iMovie. Are you kidding of, me? Really? Yeah, and a lot of very professional people explaining why that was not a good idea. So uh, <laughs> those arguments still go on occasionally, only because I kind of like, on one level, just to be able to say we'd make it that way. I, I find it kind of funny. It's, it, it's uh, part of the character of the story to, to say it's crudely made in iMovie? Well, I think... When a project happens like this so organically where, you know, you teach yourself to do something, the writing is kind of crude, the drawings are kind of crude, it's nice for everything to be on a similar level. I think when some aspects of the production become great and polished, it's out of whack with the, the writing or with the, the drawing. So well, I, I know that big... I know, for example, when South Park, obviously the original short, and this is a very similar story, it sounds like, because you just made this this one off short that kind of took off and took on a life of its own that made possible everything else. By the way, great job, Colleen, on catching Justin grabbing a drink from his beer. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but in their case... You never have a moment's with, rest with this one. It's <laughs> quick on the draw. <laughs> with, they started off with cardboard cutouts, and then once they actually started doing South Park, they had to develop a... Uh, they were using, like, silicon graphics engines, like Onyxes and stuff, and special software to make 3D renderings look like crudely drawn out cardboard cutouts. I mean, is that is that the kind of thing that you guys had to do with Life Pretty and Times much. with Tim? What did you end up going with? Yeah, well, in general, we took baby steps in that direction. The first season, we actually did animate a good amount of it in iMovie, and then we switched. Is that supposed to be on the screen? <laughs> no, that was the and Onyx. That, that was, that's the Silicon Graphics Onyx right there. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, yeah, for season one, it was half, not half, but a chunk iMovie, and then mostly Final Cut Pro, and we started dabbling with uh, After Effects. And then this year, it's almost all After Effects, which obviously we're way underutilizing what After Effects can do. Uh, I, I don't so believe it. I think you pretty much maxed it out. That's about, <laughs> that's what, in fact, that's the new demo reel for the for After Effects. Is life and time. <laughs> well, wait a minute, Brian. What? What? What is this? I'm sorry. Wait a minute. I just got a, a communique from the Federation. Uh, they say uh, After Effects wins. 
<laughs> so far, okay. So, so far, they're listening to the conversation, and the winner is so, you After know, Effects. Yes, the winner, uh, iMovie versus After Effects, just in case there was, I guess they felt the need to step in, After Effects won. Oh, is that how? I, I thought we were competing as individuals. I didn't realize the yeah, topics I thought, were competing. I was the winner no, for, or no. No, I'm sorry. It's uh, it is it is by topics, individuals, literally. They, it is a real mystical hoodoo that they run here. I don't know if anybody really understands it. Uh, you know, they they just they just chime in almost from from their Mount Olympus. They render their verdicts. Wow. I I, I don't know where this bit's headed. Okay. Uh, let me let me ask you. Let me. I, I tell you what. Let's let's talk about some. Uh, I real real quick. I mean, and this is just because it's news newsworthy. And if any show on the Twit Network's gonna talk about it, it's gonna it's Hello, gonna be an SFW. Oh. Are we gonna ask about the uh, uh, the? Oh wait, you know, I just heard the clip, and actually, it's a good idea. Could we actually play a quick clip of the life and times of Tim? I don't know if we have that ready to go. This is one that's off of of YouTube. Hello, Tim. Oh, hey, gay Gary. What? Oh, I mean, hey, Gary. Did you just call me gay, Gary? No, no. I said, hey, Gary. I cannot believe you just called me gay, Gary. I... Oh, I just want to slap you. You want to slap me? And pull your pants down and spank you. Listen, Gary, I'll be honest. Some people around the office, you know, they, they call you that. What on earth makes you think I'm gay? I don't know. Uh, mm. A lot of the gay guys in accounting have had sex with you. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> now, there we Who's go. The the from, Who's the from the live studio one? audience? <laughs> oh, uh, you can hear the live studio audience. All right. So yeah. No, definitely. Uh, Steve, let, let me ask you this. I saw a, uh, a documentary where they were talking about, or they showed you guys uh, recording all the audio uh, together in in one room. Have you guys always done that, or is that something that uh, you guys first started doing, or they started doing I guess, in the middle of it? Yeah, it's always started that way, and it still is. It's really the only way to make this kind of show where it's also, you know, reality-based and understated. Uh, you know, if, once in a while we'll do a phone patch if we have to, but in general I need to be looking at people in the eye and, you know, make sure it feels like a real conversation. But, uh, you know, this whole thing started with the voices, you know, again, back to how underproduced it was. All the actors were originally just my friends from San Francisco. You know, we got in the booth just screwing around and, you know, I didn't really even think for more than 10 minutes about who to cast. I'm like, oh, my friend MJ could play the girlfriend, and my friend Bob's pretty funny, so let's just try it. And uh, we hopped in, and, you know, to this day, both of those voices, you know, made all the, the, the rounds of approvals through all the networks, which is amazing. But, uh, yeah, in general, I like the, the sessions to be really casual and, and uh, you know, no pressure. It's really just kind of screwing around. The whole, you know... Spirit of the production is kind of just trying to make it feel like a bunch of friends so screwing around. What making What is the difference films. between? Uh, I would imagine first season you're just excited you got invited to. It's like winning the bronze medal. It's like you're up there on the stage and you don't care how good or bad you do. You're you're doing the dance. But like coming back for a second season, do you feel like you have a mandate to 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 do stuff that you didn't want to try the first time? Yeah, a mandate. That's what Gay Gary mandate said. Heaven. <laughs> like you're a holy war. <laughs> I don't know. It's I'm just saying, like, what are you gonna, what, it's got to be different second time around, is what I'm saying. Like, how is it? How is it yes. different second season? How do you for fashion person? your man bait when you know that you're following <laughs> um, Ricky Gervais now? Honestly, it doesn't feel that different. It feels like we've gotten another chance, and I guess enough people liked it. You know, we got enough uh, good reviews and uh, a, a, enough of a fan base growing that you know, at least they didn't feel like we should pull the plug on this thing. That's that's about as much of a mandate as I feel is. Uh, like, did you, you have know, that original George Lucas like nine movie arc planned, where it's like this is only the beginning for Tim. Soon yeah. he'll be fighting zombies. This, this on whole Mars. thing ends when Tim, recovering from his second failed run for president, you know, jumps off the seven story window of the office he first started in. Right. <laughs> he begins life anew as a paraplegic. Para for the life and times of paraplegic Tim. Uh, we're just. Uh, Honestly, we're just making it up as we go. It's a really small staff, mostly of people that have never made a show before, and HBO has been great enough to let it stay that way. Uh, you know, this year we stepped it up a little bit, hired some writers and and things like that. But for the most part, can we can we like can we like uh, you know what I want to do is I want to take all your quotes out of context and and act like they're breaking headlines. You know, creator of Life of Times of Tim says <laughs> show made by people goofing around who have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. Some of the quotes out of context do sound like it's an idiot making a, a TV show that should not be on the air, but I think that's a lot of the charm of it, you know? 
obviously, I say By this way, that's stuff. A, I want to point out that the, as you were saying, an idiot making a show that shouldn't be on the air, Colleen cut twice. To oh, just baby. Done. <laughs> this just, guy, he's got two thumbs and is thumb completely out of on the show. show. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I say this, obviously, it, it's controlled in some level. I'm not just, you know, it's like I've never produced anything before. I've had a long career making at least TV commercials, which, you know, maybe gives them a little confidence that, who knows, maybe he can make something funny on, on film. But uh, for the most part, it was a big leap of faith. It's like, let's let's just, you know, this short film was funny. Let's let it be what it is and let it be made the way that was made. And that's that's obviously a rare thing in the TV business. Usually you hop in and all they're doing is changing it and, and taking control away from you. So, you know, HBO has been pretty pretty amazing of a home for, for a project like this. Okay. Really the only home, probably. So uh, we made a hit list a while ago of all the big celebrities we wanted to have on NSFW. And at the top of the list, what, well, I mean, was before we knew it, it was invis Invisible Ink. We had, we had Steve Dildarian. And right underneath yeah. that was, was Kevin Perot. Smith. Because we're tremendous fans of, of his work with Smodcast. And then a little bit of this brouhaha, this Twitter explosion with it. And I feel like my two parents, two, two parents I love very much, you know, Kevin Smith and Southwest Terrorized. Boy, nice job, Colleen, cutting to, to the, uh, we ought to, uh, cutting randomly to, to, uh, to <laughs> Kevin Smith. But anyway, it's weird to watch the, I'm a huge fan of Southwest Airlines, a huge fan of Kevin, Kevin Smith. Well, do we, do we need to, to explain anything to anybody or? Everyone knows. Like, Everyone, like, there is not a human being on the face of the planet. You can go to the center of Ghana and ask, who got kicked off an Al a Southwest <laughs> Airlines flight for being too fat, only they didn't say he was too fat, and he will say Kevin Smith. Creator, Silent Bob is probably what he'll say, actually. He'll say Silent Bob, but he means Kevin Smith. Yeah. And he definitely thinks that Jason Gaming was his best work, although he's kind of partial to mole rats. <laughs> um, yeah, well, uh, so, so, Brian, apparently you, you, are, you are beholden to the corporate enterprise that is Southwest Airlines, and now you're going to sell out our hero, Kevin Smith, right? Is well, that what you're saying? The, well, it's tough, Is especially you, because... Hold on. Hold on. I'm just kidding. Wait, that is, in fact, what Brian is saying. That, that is, is what Brian is saying. We just, that is not we a just real got theory. a communique in that said that, yeah, Brian is exactly saying that. So go ahead. I mean, should I continue, or is, or is it just decided? Is there a winner? Who's the winner? I want to know who the winner is between Kevin Smith and Southwest Airlines. Well, no, the, the, the winner is your complete corporate horseship for Southwest Airlines, and now you're Ugh. ruining our chances with Kevin Smith. No. I, I, okay, look, look. All right, well, and you will t tell everyone your idea to say what you wanted to do, because I think this will get Kevin Smith on the show. You do not. You think it's a dumb idea, but I think it's a great idea. No, I thought that it was, was a great idea. Everybody had told about it thought it was dumb. Uh, and I don't know. I think it might be too late for it now. But what I wanted to do was, was, was a 21 gut salute. So we get 21 of our of our overweight uh, fans to take a picture of them overweight. lifting their Maybe belly. A one. Well, no, it doesn't make sense if it's a bunch of skinny people. Does it? Maybe you could, I don't know. There's just guts. Look at that. See, there we go. There's a bunch of guts hanging out. I don't know. Steve, listen, Colleen. you're a professional just writer for a show on television. Is it funny if the people are skinny or do they need to be fat? I don't know what's funny or not, but that's going to get him on the show. I don't know if that's no, no, no. Like, like if we if we put together like I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, you you describe it was your idea, Justin. All of a sudden, I'm kicking it over to you. The boss doesn't like yeah. the idea. It's your idea, Justin. Here's here's the idea that I didn't want to talk about because I thought it was stupid. Um, yeah, you said the you idea didn't is think it was stupid. What was that? You said you didn't think it was stupid, but go ahead. No, no, no. I would because I talk to people. It's one of those things where I'd say it's like, all right, hey Brian, I want to come out wearing a clown mask with blood streaked on it, and then you talk to a bunch of people, and you're like, like, oh no, wait, that's frightening and, and horrible and off-putting. That's not funny, Justin. Why would you do that on the show? And then I'm like, oh, you're <laughs> right. That was a bad the show, idea. And then when everybody's and then, then watching, then I'm just like, like, so why do you want to run around in a clown mask with blood streaks all over your face? Justify yeah. this idea, Justin Robert Young. Yeah. So anyway, here was the idea I had. The idea I had was to have a 21 gut salute. And you make a little YouTube video where it was just like, to everybody, because, you know, Kevin said, if you listen to the Smodcast, where he talked about the whole... Uh, the whole ordeal and him getting kicked off the plane uh, because he was allegedly too flat, too fat to fly. And, you know, he, he claims he isn't. Uh, he takes this, this real, like almost like Tom Joad at the end of grapes of wrath. Like he has this, you know, if 
Whenever you see a normie making fun of a fat kid, look for me, Ma. I'll be there. <laughs> like, he's like this champion of, of the overweight. So we want to do a, a, a thank you letter to those uh, who are now have a champion in, in Kevin Smith and have a 21 like a standing a, a, a half naked fat gutted standing slow slow clap you know exactly exactly uh, As, so that's what that was my thought was to do a little youtube video where a bunch of guts you know are, are revealed with maybe even a little thanks kev and the idea and the on. reason is is because kevin smith really does read the stuff that people post to him and if we made a goofy little video of fat people standing half naked and clapping for kevin smith then the odds are good that enough fans would say hey at that kevin smith uh did you see this video that the guys from nsfw show made for you they would like to have you on your show but then yes. I don't know. But I guess I guess it didn't go anywhere. And as the chat room is asking, what does this have to do with Steve? And what we're doing is we're asking Steve if this has a chance, and Steve is saying no. So that's what that. I don't mean to discourage you. I just didn't really get, get the idea. I thought you were making fun of him being fat and no. this like the best way of getting on. No, <laughs> you're not making fun no, of. So, you know? so you're saying outright mockery of the uh, <laughs> celebrity guest is. Is a is a no? Is that a, is that a kind of a no way to get him on? I don't know. I think he saying? knows he yeah he seems well aware of how chubby he is, but uh, the way you described it, the the reverential thing sounds really pretty moving. Actually, that sounds nice. Well, that's, See, that's uh, that was that was my thought, and then everybody that I talked to uh, to about it was was like, uh, no, that's. Uh, you know, nobody wants to see that. That's stupid. That's a dumb idea. So I, I, I let it go, and, and then Brian decided to bring it I up on the show. I thought it was a good idea. That, that was my mistake. Yeah, the, emo was the, emo the emotional part I would play up. The gut 21 gut salute sounds like it sets the wrong tone, I would say, but maybe <laughs> you don't need my opinion. No, we do. That's why we brought you on. We brought <laughs> for that you reason? On. You yeah. brought me on for that reason. <laughs> exactly. Whoa, hold on. This is Another communique wow. coming in from the Federation confirming. That, that's your soundboard. Wait a minute. That's your soundboard, that, jury. No, no, that's that's the sound. <laughs> that's the unmistakable call of the Federation. Uh, you know that and I know that. All right, so let's not mince words. Uh, they're, they're confirming, in fact, that's why we brought Steve on. Uh, so there we go. Now it it's, is oh. uh, let it be written and stuff. Okay. By the way, you know what we should have done is we should have done a whole, like, we should have, like, sneak attacked. Like, like once he's here, it becomes clear that this is not even a real show, that we're not even recording. Like, we, we just painted red marker on the light so it looked like it was turned on. And all we do is we keep hitting up with all these ideas, and we get Steve's opinion, and we're just taking notes the whole time. We're like, okay, uh -huh. yeah, okay, so yeah. don't do that. All right. Think, got, it, got it. And then we try out our hilarious voices that we think would be good on cartoons. Exactly. That'll be it. Yeah, it'll just be one really long, awkward, horrendous casting audition. Unsolicited <laughs> casting audition. Hey, what is? I know, and I actually want to know this, Steve. What is the most awkward experience that has happened as a direct result of your success with with HBO? The most awkward. I mean, personally, for me, awkward. Uh, oh yes, deeply <laughs> awkward. Personally, <laughs> I don't get into a lot of awkward things myself. Uh, the only awkwardness I ever experienced with this show is, you know, in the studio, sometimes some of our actors uh, don't always appreciate the way I run things. And, you know, we, one time we had Felicia Rashad on the on the show, you know, mom on the Cosby show. Of course. Yeah. And yeah. I don't need to explain it. Anyway, she, she's a really well-trained actor. And and I think she found my it was, I was a phone patch like we're doing now. And. You know, I think some of my my looseness and my lack of reading from the script didn't go over well with her, and she she more or less told me, you know. So wait, so, just, so you're playing? Okay, so you're actually acting. I guess they're recording you locally, and they're recording her locally, and you're doing a scene with Felicia Rashad, the mom from the Cosby Show, right? Exactly. And and, and, and your during style, that call, yeah. style I'm pretty so loose. I'm not I'm not the most professional guy in the world. The way I do a lot of things. Uh, at least people have said that to me. But, it, you know, in recording this stuff, we don't stick to the script. I don't really care what people say or how long the takes are. Or, you know, I think sometimes with a, with a great actor that like we've been lucky to get this year, we've got a few of them, sometimes they don't, they're not along for that ride. They're, they're good at what they do, and they, they kind of look at me like, does this guy 
know how to how to do this? Is he, uh, you know, in charge of this thing? And so, so what, she in particular, say, she, there had to be, and I know in your mind, I or maybe this is not true, but in my mind, you have a clear quote of exactly what she says <laughs> that will live and haunt you till the day you die, and you're refusing to say it to it. Can you? Can you? I mean, do you remember what she said? You know what? I'll preface anything I say with it. It was amazing to get her, and it was a big favor she did, and I, I really. Uh, was a thrill just to get to work with her. But she, you know, she did say things to the effect of, you know, I'm, I'm an actor, not a writer. I'm being paid to act, not write. And uh, Stephen, you should learn to trust your own writing, things like that. Oh. I, I'll tell you, it's so awesome that somebody who was famous for being a mother on television gave you this kind of scolding, uh, dismissive motherly advice. <laughs> right. It was. She like, like, was built you up while she was tearing you down. I like that. Yeah, and it wasn't dismissive. It was all respectful and, and you know, the kind of stuff you can't argue with because it's coming from, you know, the mom from the Cosby show. So she says it in, in, an, in an appropriately firm way and you can't argue with anything coming out of her mouth. <laughs> could, could you not see her as anything but the mom from the Cosby show? I mean, do you... <laughs> well, I grew up, yeah, I grew up watching that as much as anyone. And, uh, you know, but she, she, in all seriousness, was, it was amazing to work with someone like that. And you know, this year, not to change subjects, but we've had people like that where it's not the kind of person you expect to be working on the life and times of Tim. You know, we had uh, Alfred Molina this year and- um, Oh, Jesus. Yeah, Philip Baker Hall and Elliot Gould. Elliot Gould came in and did a voice, so- That's awesome. The, those are I just, just different want you to worlds, know you know? That I just want you to know that you are our Felicia Rashad. We just can't believe that you got us on the show. <laughs> and the moment we brought up our awesome Kevin Smith 21 gut salute, you just shot it down. And, and you, I think you actually said you guys are better than that. You don't need to <laughs> insult the people you want on the show. I think it was just the wrong form to present it. I don't know if this is the... See, the did, you, oh, did you do it? You're continuing. All right. Um, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> all right. Well, okay, let's do this. Listen, let's do this. Brian, Brian you, you're, out at, you're out at NACA, right? Yeah, we don't. I, I don't like to say the name of, of it just because I don't need more magicians trying to trying to compete with me. But the whole reason the whole reason we're out here on the East Coast is people uh, don't know. So some people don't know that my actual day job is I tour with a uh, uh, an eighty minute live stage show. Uh, I'm, I'm like the I don't know the Pendulette of podcasting. Although I guess Pendulette's the Pendulette of podcasting. Yeah, he actually uh, but, has but, a far but, more successful, but, uh, popular far, podcast. Brian. Yeah, thank you, thank yeah. you. Far more successful, you know, far more popular. Way more right. Twitter followers too. I'm the pendulum of the Twit Network. How about that? In that I have a, a day job where my day job and my bread and butter is to do a live stage show, uh, variety entertainment. What the hell did I just see a picture of? I think that I'm hoping that was a pendulum. But uh, the way the way you get the work, uh, because I'm not for reals famous, you know, like like a pendulette is. So I actually have to go and introduce myself to all the colleges. For the last 10 years, I've, I've toured colleges doing this 80 minute live stage show, fire eating, escapes, mind reading, that kind of stuff. And so you still have to work the meat market. So I'm there, you, you go to this conference where literally 3,000 students, all the people who do the student activities for different, every college has its own student activities fund to do different things to, uh, uh, to bring to campus. And when they do, all the student activities go and they spend somebody else's money and they don't care. I mean, I mean, they care, they want good events and they want lots of people out there, but they, they try to, Sorry, really? that just uh, just came on. Really? Apparently, they don't care. They just wanted the federation wanted to chime in and let you know they in fact don't care at all. Like, like the federation or the kids don't. The kids who okay because I don't. said I, the they kids don't. Care. No, no, they have no interest in you or your dumb show or your family that you support with the money that you get from parading your ridiculous show around the country. Okay, that's that's the thing. That's the thing that breaks my heart, right? So I go into this meat market and I'm not kidding you. This is gonna sound like an exaggeration, but it's like I'm sitting there in a trade show booth and I've got a video playing of, of my stage show of the appearances on The Tonight Show and all this stuff. And and next to my right is like a, a, a nurse who had who saved lives in Afghanistan, and she's got a lecture where she talks about how awesome it is saving lives. And to my left is is Dennis Haskins, the guy who played Mr. Belding, and and you know he's he's like, hey, remember me? I was Mr. Belding, and I could come to your campus, and we could have dinner together, and then I'll do a stage show, and it'll be like, hey, I'm Mr. Belding, and uh, it's it's very soul crushing <laughs> to get there and try to and just. To, to detach yourself from who you actually are and what you've done with the stage show and try to instead 
paint pictures of, look, I come to your show, it's, it's fantastic. So here's what I wanna say, is if there was a shortcut, if there was a way that I didn't have to go to the meat market and describe my own show 35 times every hour, that would be delightful. And it occurs to me that the NSFW audience might want the live stage show to come to their campus. And if so, you could contact whoever your student activities group is directly. But here's what I wanted to tell you. Wait, is it? Oh, not, I didn't know this yeah. is a pitch. No, 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 no. Well, whoa, well, yes, come on. Uh, Colleen, just, can, can we get the ad rates no, no, on how much it takes to just shamelessly shill your own wares on the Twit podcast? No, 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 listen, he listen should, to me. He should, have, he this, should be made to pay for that. I didn't tell you. This is the part I was holding back. Are you listening? Are you listening? I had I somebody who loved the idea of having this show, but more importantly, what they wanted was for us to stick around. They said, how much more for you to stick around an hour afterward and do NSFW live on our campus? That's what I was gonna say. Really? They, would, they would fly you out there. Wait, what campus? I'm, dude, dude, I can't say on the air. They haven't decided. Camp? It's not, they gotta book it first. But how really? awesome would that be, dude? Wait, somebody wants us to come out and do NSFW live on their campus. On a stage, like the show ends, we pull out a couple of, of laptops and benches, and then we just go, boom, NSFW live on stage with the studio audience comprising of more than five people who are fans of anime cons. Wow. No, I didn't know. I'll tell you, legit folks, this is not a... Hold on, wait a minute. Before I even say it, uh, the Federation is also just knows intuitively, uh, this is not a bit. Uh, I, am, I am shocked. I had not heard this news from Brian before. Uh, that's awesome, if that you, actually yeah. happened. <laughs> you're clearly, you're clearly flabbergasted. You clearly don't believe that. No, I don't believe you. I'm waiting for you to just pull the rug it is out from under me. As, as soon as I get on my, like, at my baby deer legs stabilize themselves, and I'm like, oh, really, Brian? <laughs> really? Really? We're gonna go? They're gonna fly me out, and they're gonna watch the show? We're gonna do it live? And then you just yank. <laughs> I must but by the way, and, that, and that's what I wanted to ask. That's what I was getting at with Steve is, is do you ever do any live? I mean, do, I, I, surely you work like, uh, you know, Comic-Con or, or any of the animation conventions and you get a chance to talk live in front of stage on the show. What is that like? So I, I go to Comic-Con. I never went to Comic-Con. No, I'm I surely you have, you have to go to some kind of, I mean, you have a successful animation show on HBO. Nobody's had you out for anything? No, we did the thing in New York, the uh, New York Television Festival. That was at the beginning of season one, and I talked a little bit after that. But um, that was more just an interview on stage. But I, I, I don't, other than, you know, pitching the show originally, there's no reason for me to go talk to anyone. I don't... Uh, so you, you wouldn't want to, even if you had the chance, if somebody called and they're like, we'd love for you to get on stage and talk about how awesome the show is? <laughs> no, I would, yeah, I would. Comic-Con, I don't know why we haven't done that. I assume we should have probably, but uh, I guess HBO does things the way they want to do them. But yeah, I would, uh, I'm not a big stage performer. There's a reason I'm a writer and a you know animation guy. I'm I'm not I'm not looking to get up on stage too often. Well, I so, mean, you know, Brian, I went listen, to uh, Brian, went to Rowan like, University, Steve, right? Steve said yes to us, so clearly <laughs> he will say yes to anything. You know, <laughs> yeah. I think we've demonstrated that the, the floor is really low for for uh, <laughs> Mr. Dilberry. <laughs> yeah, what do you what do you see uh, like like what, what are you doing next to promote the show? Like, where do you see the show going? Uh, I mean, obviously, every every season you do uh, is your goal just to just to get you know just be good enough that you get booked again, or uh, or or do you have like a long term goal for that? Like, do we get Tim Mugs at some point? <laughs> you can get Mugs. Eh? The mugs are the mugs are already out there and t shirts. No, I mean the reality is we're we're just getting started. We're they haven't even come back for season two yet. You know, we're three days away from that. So we're just getting started. We're just barely, you know, in the early stages of seeing if this is going to stick, which hopefully it will. But, uh, you know, you don't really plan. You just, there's so much work just to get the show made. It's a miracle that we, you know, we made them all on time and on budget, you know, and we can actually hand it in. So it's really too much chaos in every day to, to think, you know, make plans. This is not a thing where we're making plans. We're just, trying to make a funny show and and working ridiculously fast and hard all year long to do it. Awesome. Hey, uh, Justin. Yes, sir. Just before the show, you you were going to bring it up, but but I ended up accidentally bringing it up first. The chat room is all a buzz about chat roulette. WTF, mate. Oh, there we go. All right. So here's the thing. Uh, Steve, I don't know. Have you ever heard of this thing, chatroulette.com? No, should I have? 
No, well, it, it's it's emerging. It's one of those one of those hip websites that you know just kind of bubbling under the surface. People in the tech community are kind of buzzing about it. Uh, but basically, here's the deal. So you go onto this site. It's called Chat Roulette, and you have like the webcam, like we have right now, and you were just paired up with a random stranger. So literally, other people who are on the site, you click next, and all of a sudden you are up with that person, and you talk to that random stranger for as long as either of you hit next. Uh, so I would actually advise Colleen not to hit next here because- Yeah, no, because, because fully like 10% of all of them, yeah, she cut away real fast there. Make sure you see what you get before you cut back over because like apparently according to the chat room, like fully 10% of, of the people you're paired with are, are gentlemen uh, who are, are having a good Rolling time. Rolling the dice. Rolling, rolling the dice. Rolling people rolling can, the dice. People who can see me on the very video hot feed. In their apartment, and uh, they they're just very itchy somewhere on their body. Uh, <laughs> so the question, the chat room wanted us to do a combination of blitz quiz with with, with chat roulette. So imagine you're on chat roulette, you don't know who you're going to be paired with, and all of a sudden you got Hitler screaming at you, and then bu -bu 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 blitz quiz, and then you. Randomly shouting at them to answer a random trivia Here's question. The problem, Brian. There is one fatal flaw. And Steve, I would say either, you know, if you wanted to, 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 to try it either now or sometime in your free time, if you were to go on there, you know, you don't have a lot of long conversations. It's, it's mostly people looking for girls so they can scream, you know, boobs or GTFO, or it's dudes rolling the dice like we mentioned before. <laughs> um, scratching you know, the news. It, it's not a place where, like, you can just go on there and be like, so, what do you guys think of healthcare reform? You know, <laughs> it's uh, not a whole lot of that. <laughs> so, but, like, specifically, I actually... So, here we go. Look, I, I, if anybody I, watched the video feed right now, Colleen is talking to a, a silver-haired guy that looks almost like a fat Bill from Kill Bill. And uh, <laughs> I, I can't see what they're really typing to each other. But, uh... <laughs> Oh, here we go. <laughs> you are on TV, yep. live twit.tv. Seriously, what did he say back? He said, he said uh, fun, huh? Yeah, uh, funny, funny website. website. No, it's work. <laughs> so, Although, but here's... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Justin. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just kind of... I'm expecting for him to get hit by the five-point exploding heart technique uh, at any moment now. No, um, here's what I think would be hilarious, is to one of these days, like, as soon as the show's over, just full-on find a random person on chat roulette and just do just do a full NSFW show for, like, one person and maybe record it and do it, like, as a special thing. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was thinking maybe, like, a, like a million-dollar question. I don't know where we get a million dollars, but I'd like to give it away on chat roulette. I'd like to ask <laughs> one random person a question, and if they answer correctly, give them some ungodly sum of money. <laughs> That's all we got to do is find a sponsor. You don't have a million dollars you want to lay around for a comedy bit, do you, Steve? No, I don't. That sounds like a, not my worst nightmare, by the way. You just get on in a video format and you're just talking to someone randomly. Yeah, yeah. Awesome? Just exactly like this show. Uh, yeah. Only, only, we, only we don't end up talking to Steve Dildarian. We talk, we, we start to talk to, I don't know, some, some 43 year old who's uh, excited. And it doesn't, <laughs> seem it doesn't seem creepy to anyone? Oh, no, uh, no, no, no. It, it's insanely creepy. It might be the okay. most creepy thing on the planet. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah. Wait, hold uh, on. We are getting a, a final ruling here. Yes, nothing has ever been creepier in uh, <laughs> humanity's great story history. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So now confirm. That live from the panel. I don't know. I'm I'm infatuated with this chat roulette idea. It's like to me the most awkward thing in the world about meeting a random stranger where you have no idea what you have in common or anything. Like nothing. Hold on. What do you what do you what are you saying? What did what? Right, right now, yeah. Colleen is talking to an Asian boy who's wearing a skull cap, and uh, is is right now just very very confused on why. This is Colleen like some kind of bizarre uh, version of of. Uh, Candid camera was like, zap, you're famous now. Za, next. And you just keep yeah, Is this legal for us to be showing people on the screen? When I, they I'm don't actually know worried. Yeah, I, mean, I would actually encourage, uh, I don't know, probably. It's it's the internet, man. Everything's See, legal. Steve, uh, as our official legal counsel for the show, uh, is this legal or not? You're asking me? Yeah, I'm yes. asking you. Yes. <laughs> for legal, we're asking for legal advice.
I can't picture you getting sued from that, but uh, here we go. Done. You know, this is I made. Go for it. <laughs> By the way, chat room is asking it, is uh, asking I'm, everyone for I'm, their ASL for their age sex location. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, gonna write that in the suit the that room. eventually engulfs this network and and, and show. Uh, yeah, at which point the the uh, you know, defendant said, "Well, Steve Del Darian said it was cool. Let's roll." <laughs> Let me, let me get this straight, sir. You took legal advice from a man who makes a funny cartoon on the HBO network, and you believe this was probable cause to call random Asians with skull caps and put them on the Twit network. Is that correct, sir? <laughs> yes, we did. All right. Well, I think we're on solid ground. The federation. Uh, what the big deal is. <laughs> What's the uh, man? I you never, you, Steve. You never, you never. Because I remember the early days of the internet when you know, discover a chat room and you're like, oh, it's a room where we can chat. And you know, you walk in and it's super awkward. <laughs> only you don't have to see everyone else's awkward look in the eyes. You never did the chat room thing. You never had random encounters on on none, chat. None of this stuff is my thing. I don't like. I got shocked that this many people in the world want to chat with everyone so much and talk and <laughs> stay in touch every everything all of them i gotta be honest this is not me facebook twitter i i, I can't think of anything i want to say right now that i want to share with uh you know everyone i've met since high school you know and, and post it to to them um what, always... what's your feeling on random asians and skull caps <laughs> 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 I just everyone's different, I guess. I I just I'm not a big one for small talk, and I don't you know if I go to the park with my dog, I don't want to chat with those people any more than I want to you know like this. I enjoy I'm talking to you guys, but just rant. I don't know. The whole thing is um, you know what I want to do. It's like I just I can't mean. think of like uh, like I would like I, maybe I'm I'm influenced by all the 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 folks here at anime cons, but it's like they do the the cosplay stuff. It's like I get in all kinds of crazy costumes, and I'd be like you know accusing them of crime and telling them you know what I do is I would get in a superhero outfit. And I would just start going off on uh, and, and make up a name for whoever this person is, and I'd act like he's my arch nemesis. And that finally, I'm going to right wrongs. This is, I think this is a technically terrorist th threat. Does I think, anybody I think know what Brian's is, talking about? Or is he just I'm, rambled into incoherence? No, I'm saying <laughs> I would get on chat roulette, I would put on a costume, I would dial oh, okay. a random person, and I would just go off like like I'm a superhero and I'm finally going to take down the bad guy. And then just, just full on you know, like apparently somebody does that with the, with the Cobra Commander outfit is what I'm told. Like somebody actually dresses up in a Cobra Commander outfit and dials random people on on uh, on chat roulette. So, so next thing you know, you just hit next on chat roulette and you just see, uh, you know, old double C Cobra Commander rolling the dice right in front of you. <laughs> Scratching the itch. It is a very hot in his apartment. He's just wearing yeah. the, in fact, he's only See, look, to wear look the at his left hand. For anybody watching the video feed, we have a big drip of Gober Commander, and he has one finger out pointing, and the other one is bald in a fist, used for God knows what, as his uh, oh, fingers oh, see, what you, Why you got to take us there all the time? You're oh, so no, sweet Lord, everybody, put the baby to bed. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> I tell you what, dude, uh, whoever, and this is my idea, to, uh, this is our gift to you guys. I want to, there was an early version of this show. We did some test things, and, and it was actually right here at Patrick's house where we did, uh, we, we couldn't get the Ustream feed working, so we did it on Stickam, which means that not only are we broadcasting, but we can see other people in the chat room, they broadcast back to us. And there's this guy who dresses up in a bear costume and just raids chat rooms, video chat rooms, and and uh, goofs around in a in a costume. I thought that was a great idea. I want to see it taken up a notch with like if somebody. If, I tell you what, make a collection of of any of you guys on chat roulette just in full costume and capture it for us. And we'll we'll I will I'll do a whole. I'll dedicate hours and hours of NSFW to it. Who's who's just called? Did somebody get a call? <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. All right, nobody likes that. See, there it is again. What is that? Oh, it's IRC. I have no PMing idea. Me. Stop PMing me. That's what's happening. Right, is, I, is... There's a part of me that thinks that you've descended into madness. What? You <laughs> this think that's is a just, great idea? You thought this it was is the unraveling of Brian Brunswick. No, 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 not the idea. Just you hearing random sounds. Who? What? 
Oh, I think everybody should dress up like the Cobra Commander. That's what I. Whoa! Where? Who is? Why did the Raven say that to me? What is? That? I don't even know. Hold on, hold on. You know this person in roulette chat? No, right? Okay, on the visual, on the visual, they just called. Oh, okay. There's somebody in the costume. I can't believe it. Somebody's doing it. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so by the way, this is the best advertisement I could possibly imagine for the fact that we are finally getting a video feed on iTunes for NSFW, which I'm betting, Justin, you can know what that's going to mean, like what we're going to want to do with this video feed, like to launch it, when it launches, what, I'm, what we're going to ask everyone to do. Justin? Uh, download it. Uh, subscribe to it on iTunes. No, but not just do that, but do that at the exact same time. Like, like oh, it's yes. being submitted. We don't know when it'll come out, but it's important like, like we did with the Operation iScan. But we'll see how high at one specific targeted moment we could get the thing all the way back up to the top. Absolutely. Oh, look. All right. Now Colleen is talking about uh, or talking to a man in another skullcap. Jesus, skullcap is very popular on chat roulette. And this guy's wearing sunglasses, uh, presumably at night. And uh, what looks to be a basketball jersey. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we were actually getting calls. Uh, somebody actually just called in. It's the, the Butter Brother Parquet. Jay, you're on the air. What's going on, man? This can only go well. I dress up in a badger outfit and surf the internet. Okay, that's that's the last time I answered the call the phone for my brother. That was a very bad mistake. I apologize that. Uh, all right, look, I don't know where else to, to, to head with this thing. I did want to talk about South by Southwest Interactive because we're doing something new this year. You you said you, you've never been to Austin or South by Southwest, right, Steve? No, I haven't, no. Do you have any interest? Do you know about the South by Southwest? Oh, yeah. Interact? Yeah, yeah. I uh, haven't never made it down there. Well, it's, I, it's, think, I think what Steve is saying is, you know, Steve needs an invite. He's a very busy man. He's got a new show uh, debuting the second season, 9.30 Friday, uh, Fridays on HBO, The Life and Times of Tim. It's hilarious if you have not seen the first season. Uh, but, you know, uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Steve, Yeah, send an invite. To old Mr. Dildarian, <laughs> and he'll show up. He'll come down, talk about the show, have a good time, right? By the way, uh, <laughs> well, and you know your buddy uh, Dan Rollman's going to be there. We're going to hook up with him as well. But I live in Austin, and so oh, Justin's going to be coming out, and along with uh, Brett Rounceville, the Amtrekker, and Owen J.J. Stone, a.k.a. O Doctor, all contributors, past contributors to NSFW. So for the first time, literally, a group of people who have known each other and hung out virtually online for two years is finally going to be in the same space in the same city at the same time and uh, uh we're a little bit stoked about it and so we don't know we're gonna we're gonna try to do some live coverage uh you know i don't know basically sharing what's going on at south by southwest interactive but if you made it down there i think you'd have a blast it's a it's a hell of a time I, yeah i don't doubt it that's one of the places i've been meaning to get to i didn't realize you're down there i thought you guys were in new york you're uh you're in Austin? No, I, I physically right now I'm in Boston, Massachusetts for this conference, and that's why Absolutely. we ducked over and we took we we stole the the the, the studio of uh, AnimeCons.com, uh, which bears a striking resemblance to. Let me put it this way: only a few minutes ago, I'm glad that the neighbor stopped doing his laundry in time for the podcast. <laughs> So, <laughs> so that so that we didn't have extra audio in in here. But uh, but yeah, I live in Austin. Gotcha. Where are you based out of? Where are you from? San Francisco. I grew up in Jersey, but yeah, San Francisco, and and now you know we make the show in L.A. So I zip back and forth to you know between here and Burbank pretty much every week. But uh, try to try to keep San Francisco as home base. Awesome. All right, Justin, you got anything else? Because we're already coming up in an hour here. We're gonna have to. What the hell was Golly that? just threw up a, a big uh, billowing gay flag as soon as San Francisco uh, got brought up there. <laughs> Uh, well, no, listen, I, I just, uh, you know, I'm very, very excited coming out to Austin to do uh, the South by Southwest thing. Uh, but equally, if not more so excited for the, uh, the, the premiere of the second season of uh, The Life and Times of Tim. Uh, uh, Steve, can you give us just, uh, you know, cause we always have Spoiler. the, the, the TV buffs and everything. Uh, you know, they watch the show and they comb us for all the details they can throw up on their message boards and blogs and what have you. Well, what are some never before heard a uh, scoop on what we can expect on the second season of the life and times of Tim. <laughs> uh, never before. Uh, we got a lot of more, uh, we still have strippers and prostitutes and uh, homeless people. 
Thank goodness. Uh, Thank goodness. That's, that's the constant. You know, the guest stars, we, haven't, we don't publicize it a whole lot. You'll see it in the credits each week. But, you know, we, we have a lot of guest stars that you're going to hear in there. And if you look at the credits, you'll see their names. But, you know, in the first episode this coming uh, Friday, we've got uh, Will Forte from SNL and uh, Tony Hale, who was on Arrested Development. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, so we got, we got great people, and throughout the season, you'll see them. You know, Judah Friedlander from uh, 30 Rock, and a long list, right. really. Pretty much. I, 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 don't, I don't want to break your heart here, Steve, but, but this yeah. is all stuff I'm betting is in a press release somewhere. We want an NSFW exclusive, and I'll tell you this much. Greg Grunny Grunberg, Greg Grunberg from uh, uh, Lost, reprised his role as the pilot of, of the flight that crashed, and he was willing to reveal a single word that was spoken in his line on the show that was never revealed anywhere else. We had a world exclusive, and all we're asking is for the same from you. What is a, spo a full-on spoiler in this first episode, Friday night, that you can say for a fact, Tim, Tim will say? A line that Tim says? Um, or a word. Or a word. No, Context. no, 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 he was going to say a line. <laughs> don't, don't beg back on a word, Brian. Jesus. Or a paragraph. What a negotiator or are you? Or just read the whole script, either way. We'll sell it for $100. <laughs> Wait a minute, one. Uh, he says, Amy, with a question mark. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. An NSFW exclusive. <laughs> Federation's confirming. Yep, Amy, question mark. It's in there. <laughs> It's definitely in there. Glad, I'm glad we got that all worked out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can't give it all. Can't give it all away, right? No, dude. You no, gave away. You, no, you did no. give it all away. It's Amy question mark. After that, I mean, I don't even know if I watch now. I actually you know, did give away. Just... I actually did give away the ending. That is the surprise ending when Amy walks in. And so. Wait. Oh, of, all right. Well, just there we go. It for a lot of people. <laughs> uh, wow. Wow. Everyone's going <laughs> to be watching everyone, the show on yeah. Friday at 9.30 when Tim's cutting up a hooker or completing an accidental drug deal or something, and they're just going to be waiting because they know she shows up. It's just going to be, you know, a matter of time before all this house of cards comes crumbling down in such a horrendous way, fashion. The, the, Tim. the chat room, ever the source of brevity, just says, eat S, TMZ. <laughs> like, uh, suck it, dude. We... All right, dude. Look, uh, I, I say we wrap things up here. I know that it's kind of odd because we're on location. We're in a weird place. I want to give a huge thanks to Colleen for actually switching the show. I don't know. What, what, what are we doing next week? I know you promoted the Olympics. We're going to do the Olympic, uh, the Olympic Internet, the Internet Olympics. Yeah, yeah. we're doing uh, the Olympics, which is, of course, uh, spelled at T-E-H-0-L-Y-M-1-K-S, which is a completely wholly unaffiliated uh, and independent global games. Uh, we're going to be playing yeah, that that's tomorrow. Right. We, got, <laughs> we got, we got, when we did the GTFO awards and, uh, and, and Tom Merritt joined us, we originally were going to actually, uh, play the Olympics theme. And he was just like, Oh, that's a hell of a way to get a cease and desist letter. And we're like, what, what are you talking about? He's like, Oh, you didn't know they're the most litigious organization on the planet. We mentioned them once and we got uh, a cease and desist letter. So maybe we won't call it the Internet Olympics. Maybe we'll call it um, Te. No, no, the no, no. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're Wait, calling it the, yeah. the, the Olympics. Uh, and of course, it's spelled as it is uh, uh, very deliberately because it has nothing to do with whatever is going on in Vancouver. Whatever silly international uh, horse apples is going on up there in the snow with the rest of the Canucks. Uh, no, we're going to be playing our own game. And uh, it'll be, no, please, Colleen, stop showing the actual International Olympic Committee <laughs> <laughs> uh, logo and seal. Um, She's actually so showing the game. It's next this week. Uh, the, games, uh, the games will be revealed. We'll probably put it out on Twitter. But it's going to be a real, real, real fun time. And uh, tune in next week. We, we still actually, and actually, I would love to, to get suggestions for the chat room. All the best stuff that we ever do on the show comes from suggestions from the chat room. So over Twitter, uh, at, uh, you can message us at, at Schwood or at Justin R. Young. Justin R. Young, right? Yes. Uh, yes. They can give a suggestion for events that we should have. Do you have. Are you doing the Twitter thing, Steve? Do you care about Twitter at all? I care a lot. Yeah, I don't do it myself. Uh, like I said before, it's just... I would sit there for an hour thinking of something to write, and this is way too frustrating and, and too much pressure for me. 
Uh, so it's just not, not my thing. The HBO so does they, it for if, the if show. If I may translate, you know? if I may translate, it sounded to me like what you meant to say was, Brian, do you not realize I am the creator and primary <laughs> actor in a second season <laughs> HBO original animated feature? And uh, I'm afraid I don't have time for your, your Twitters and your tweets. <laughs> I get paid to write. I'm a professional. <laughs> That's what exactly. I, mean. I don't know if exactly. that's what you're making. Exactly what I was trying to say. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, look, uh, I say, let's, I think we got time for one more. Uh, I, I do want to hear the other clip, the other one that we had. The, uh, and I'm, I'm saying this with a little bit of last minute notice for Colleen. I don't know if I gave her enough time to switch everything over, but Tim, we're going to watch need the other. a very important favor. Okay. Now, as you know, the firm is currently involved in a sexual harassment lawsuit. I don't have to testify, do I? No, what we needed to do is to get out there and sexually harass someone. W why? Well, just so it looks like it's common, like it happens all the time, like it's no big whoop. I can't do that. Oh, come on. I don't want to harass anyone. We need it to make it seem like this is just a fun-loving office where the good times never stop and the groping and vulgar language are all accepted. That's your strategy. Yeah. To win the lawsuit. Bang. <laughs> By the way, am I the only one that noticed that he was just exactly describing the plot of Mad Men? Or, or is, that, is that just me? <laughs> Justin? Just you. Uh, Just, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay, thank Just you. you. Just you. That Just like you. Sorry. That was like Federation. A Federation has like, ruled. You're, you're, you're the weirdo. You I are Mr. Straight Creeper. Straight up. And, 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 and you just didn't even respond. You just was like, call oh, him oh. Mr. Creeper. Brian Brushwood. <laughs> I hate you so much, Justin Romero. All right, look, uh, I say we wrap things up with this one. I cannot give you enough thanks, Steve. What do you want most to, to play? I mean, obviously, we're plugging the show. Everyone's going to tune into the show anyway because the show's exploding and it's gonna, you're in your second season and everything. You got anything else out there like you, Tim Muggs you were mentioning? We'll buy the Tim Muggs. <laughs> all, all we've got is the DVD. You know, we just released uh, season one DVD what, like a week ago. So, you know, get out there. It's already know. all over BitTorrent is what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, the DVD... Uh, you know, is is, uh, is all we've got, really. You know, I don't I can't picture people buying Tim mugs. So, <laughs> the uh, DVD, and then this Friday, there you go. Amazon. I'll just grab a mug and I'll write the word Tim on it. I can make my own <laughs> Tim mug. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, yeah, we're not too I, big on the merchandise. Yeah. South Southwest. I'm bummed. I'm bummed that you won't be there, but we'll uh, we'll do we'll do shots with Tim Rollman and and be nice. thinking of you. But uh, if it's yeah. okay with you guys, I've got to go back to the meat market and try to sell a show that'll feed my family for the next year. So anything else, Justin, you want to wrap this up? Uh, no, that is uh, about it. Uh, apparently, uh, Colleen is typing all sorts of great stuff into her Twitter. Uh, but if you want to follow my Twitter, it is Justin R. Young. And uh, of course, itrix.com, the only magic news site on the internet, and weirdthings.com, the only site for weird uh, happenings and occurrences in the Weird Things podcast featuring... Uh, myself, Brian Brushwood, and the genius Andrew Maine. Yes, indeed. All right, guys. Uh, don't forget Ashwood and uh, new episode of Scam School. We had our 100th episode. It was awesome. Head over to scamschool.tv. That is it for this episode of NSFW, the never chose fail whale show. NSFW. <laughs>